Headphone amplifiers have always been a subject of controversy. Why? Well, usually you expect the dock to come with a headphone amplifier. So where does a large high-end headphone amplifier stand in today's world? Well, the Aoun S17 Pro is literally one of the best headphone amplifiers you can get. And even better, this one is priced at 699 US dollars, which makes it very affordable for those who want a high-end experience but just don't want to spend too much on it. Usually the 699 US dollars, so below 1000 US dollars, price range is reserved for high-end products but which are not quite there yet. Well, the Aoun S17 is there and we have quite a few interesting features the most evident of them being the huge driving power that this amplifier has we have up to seven and a half watts of power and what does that mean well the aun s17 is going to drive everything from Audes LCD5 to Hyphiman HA6 SA to basically every other headphone out there. It can even drive some speakers with that kind of power, although the connection would be quite complicated and it doesn't have the same power over the pre-output. So taking a look at it physically, this is a huge amplifier and not quite that tall but large physically. It is very heavy and it also grows quite hot during usage. It even has a temperature sensor inside and you can actually see what is the current temperature of the heatsink and of the transistors inside. This is important because this is a full class A amplifier. Those tend to run quite hot and uh, you can expect the temperature to be anywhere between 50 and 69 degrees. When it reaches 69 degrees it tends to enter in an overheat protection mode and it tends to limit the current that it is being fed to the amplifier. Why is that? Well, it has two current modes, two gain modes, and three headphone outputs. So those are quite a few numbers. Let's start with the current modes. It can provide either a 50 milliampers or a 100 milliampers current, but running it in 100 milliampers makes it run quite hot and it is hot to the touch. The chases can get up to 50 degrees Celsius, which is very hot to the touch, situation in which you may want to run it at a more limited current mode at 15 milliampers, at 50 milliampers, situation in which it stays cooler at about 49 degrees for the heat sink and about 35 degrees for the chases. The entire cooling is done passively, so there is no active cooling component, no fan inside, but it has cooling holes at the back. It has this huge, and I mean, just look at this huge chases, which is made of metal and which aids with the cooling. On the inside, there is a huge heat sink, which is seated over the transistors and which helps cool them off. At the front, we have one XLR headphone output, one single-ended 6.3 millimeters headphone output and one 4.4 millimeters headphone output in balanced mode. We have a beautiful display. We have an IR remote sensor because this one does come with a remote, although the remote is black in color while the unit is silver. We also have the volume wheel, which acts as a button. You can press on it and you can configure most important aspects of the unit using the button at the front. So you don't even need to use the remote if you don't desire so. The volume wheel has well-defined steps. It clicks in place. It also can be pressed and you can have one short press to select between the XLR and RCA inputs, so one short press, a long press to engage either the high gain or the low gain mode for the headphone outputs, so long press, and two short presses to engage either the 100 milliampere current mode or the 50 milliampere current mode. Those should be quite enough for most people. The display stays on and the display shows you the current volume, the current temperature, the gain mode, the current mode, and that's about it because this is everything you need to know about it. It is not a DAC, so there are only analogic inputs and we have an RCA input and an XLR input. The RCA input is single-ended or unbalanced while the XLR input is balanced with three pins for each cable. We do have the pre-output at the back and this is either in RCA format or XLR format. We also have a kettle plug input and an on-off switch. The unit doesn't turn off by itself, so you need to engage or disengage the on-off switch at the back or you need to use the remote. Since this is a class A headphone amplifier, it will keep growing hot or it will stay at the same temperature. In 50 milliampers current, it will stay at the same temperature, which is about 49 degrees for the transistors. Or if you engage the 100 milliampere current mode, it will keep growing hotter and hotter until it reaches 69 degrees for the transistors. Well, this may sound quite hot. It is quite hot, but it is livable. You should be okay with those temperatures. The important part is the sound, right? So you are here to learn more about the sound of the Aoun S17 Pro. You may have heard how awesome it is, but just how does it sound? Well, first off, 
we have the headphone outputs, which have a slightly different signature from the free outputs. And you really have to take into account the DAC that is feeding the signal as well, because with some DACs it will have a certain sound and with other DACs it can be entirely different. For example, I have tried pairing it with FIO K9 Pro ASS version and the sound was much flatter, smoother, warmer, thicker and richer compared to when I paired it with the Hyphiman EF600. This being said, the level of the background noise is also different because the DAC can have quite a bit of background noise which will be transferred to the S17 and you will hear that in music. For example, Fio K9 Pro ASS has no background noise, none that I can hear, so it is very quiet, especially over the XLR output. On the other hand, Hyphiman EF600 has a bit of background noise which you will hear. It is present in both the headphone output and the pre-output modes. This is because it is the DAC signal amplified. The unit doesn't have any kind of self noise, which I find quite cool. It means that the unit will not have any noise if there is no signal being fed to it or if the DAC has no background noise, which is really excellent. I mean, this unit, zero noise, EMs, headphones, speakers. You can have a full-sized speaker amplifier connected to it running in class A at all times and it will have zero noise. How awesome is that? I was able to test this using the Ketches S300 Plus, which does not have a pre-function. So that amplifier is running at full volume at all times, which means that it will easily, and I mean really easily show any kind of dock, amp, preamp noise. You will know whether there is any kind of noise from any source. And this, the Aun S17 Pro has zero noise with it, which is already quite excellent, but I also paired it with EMs and headphones. And one of the EMs that I paired it with, it's the Lishur Cadenza 12, which is a surprisingly good EM. It has such a rich, detailed, vivid and engaging punchy dynamic sound. And one thing that I've noticed is that there is very little volume control if the DAC doesn't have any kind of volume control. So even in low gain, with Hyphiman EF600 the volume is quite high, which means that the DAC is feeding a very, very loud signal to it. That being said, no distortion, no high levels of background noise. It keeps things controlled, but at volume one, it is already quite loud. So if I basically implemented four stages of gain in their DX320 Max Ti, I expect that some people want EMs to be quieter. So S17 would be better for headphones and hard to drive headphones than it is for EMs. Not because the sound is bad, but because the volume control allows for more flexibility with headphones if you listen at quiet volumes. You wouldn't expect me to say this, so please take that into account. This especially if you have Hyphiman EF600. EF600 is an excellent duck, but look at it, it's tall. It is also silver in color, but just look, this is supposed to sit tall on your desk, which may obstruct you from seeing your display, which means that you have to place it on the right or on the left side of your display. At the same time, Aun S17 doesn't do that. This one can be seated beneath your display, which I think is more practical with one minor caveat. It is thick enough and it runs warm enough that I do not suggest placing it on top of any other own device. Even though those look like they could be placed together, except for the network player, which I heard is running very cool and isn't affected by temperature. For example, S9C is already a warm towards hot running DAX headphone amplifier. So if you place this on top, which reaches 69 degrees on the transistor, you are going to run into heat issues. So you need to take that into account. This is not to be stuck with a hot running DAC. You are best placing them side by side so they each have space and can cool off safely. As I was saying, the sound, the sound of the Aun S17 Pro is so amazing. It is the richest, most organic, most refined sounding amplifier that I had. And those are either positive words or negative words. Don't forget, it all depends on what kind of sound you're looking for. Because I think that it really smooths out the top end just enough for it to be smooth and enjoyable, rich and silky, but not enough to take away all of the interesting part from the treble. This being said, I prefer a slightly brighter treble, so I find this to be very smooth and very relaxed. The sound is relaxed, the sound stage is incredibly deep, it is very spacious, you get enough space both in front of you, behind you, 
laterally you have space basically everywhere and that is really interesting it has such a good instrument separation and such a good sound stage but the fun doesn't stop there it is also very good with the dynamics with detail and with resolution i just keep saying this but it all depends on the DAC. you really need to have it connected to a high quality DAC for it to sound its best so with hi man ef600 which is quite large to have them side by side. This also runs quite warm, but with it, the dynamics are out of this world. They are incredible to listen to. You can hear music as if you were at a live concert, especially as I enjoy playing some live concerts on my computer. And I enjoy getting that first row feeling with both of them. You, you just get such a unique presentation. And you may be wondering, why would you need the Aune 17 if you already have the F600? I mean, what does it bring to the table? Well, first off, it brings in volume control. EF600 doesn't have volume control for the DAC output. So if you connect that to a speaker amplifier or to an external amplifier, you get no volume control. It acts as a DAC, not as a preamplifier. So with catches S300+, plus, you won't get any kind of volume control. You will need to use a preamplifier to get volume control. While for headphones, the EF600 has less driving power than the S17 Pro has on the headphone output. You also don't get a 4.4 millimeter native output on the F600 as it has either XLR or 6.3 millimeters headphone outputs. So this one isn't quite as versatile while Aune S17 can totally improve on that. Aune S17 also improves on the functionality and sound of the S9C. And although S9C has been one of my most favorite DAX headphone amps, the S17 Pro can improve on the sound greatly. You will get better control, a higher dynamic range, better driving power, and better resolution slash detail. It's like improving everything. And you can take advantage of all of that by having this unit. It's superb, it's really, really awesome. But it doesn't stop there yet. Even on the pre-output, so if you connect it to another stereo amplifier, you still get that refinement, richness, and lushness added to the sound. So it can improve on the thickness, on the impactfulness, and on the overall substance that you get from your speakers. It really improves on the sound stage of your speakers, especially in depth and in distance that you get between you and background instruments, but it doesn't bring the forward voices backwards too much. So it allows the singer to be somewhat intimate to you, all the while it allows the music to happen in a wider, larger space. It's quite interesting. Since this is a pure headphone amplifier, there is no DSP or digital signal processing involved. It is just how the analogic parts combine and how they sound like together. It is magical. That is the best way to describe it. It's absolutely magic. So if you need a quick version of the video, this is a headphone amplifier, has crazy levels of driving power. It's insanely good at driving headphones. It can drive out the LCD5 with ease. There is no headphone that will pose a threat to the S17 Pro. It sounds rich, lush, relaxed, wide, deep, and it has an excellent instrument separation. It is very resolute, but the end sound will depend a lot on the DAC. If you have a good DAC, it will sound better. If you have a poor quality DAC, it will sound worse. You need a good DAC to feed it good signal. It has what I would consider to be a perfect sound in every single aspect possible. Just perfect clarity, perfect resolution, perfect presentation. It is basically ideal. It is not quite a tube amplifier, but it draws in all of the advantages of tubes. For example, richness, lushness, clarity, and detail and precision of a tube amplifier, all the while being rich sounding and natural. So is it going to be a perfect amplifier for you? I think that if you mainly have headphones, the answer is yes, especially if you have hard to drive headphones, but even for easy to drive headphones, it's quite ideal. If you enjoy a smoother, more relaxed sound, if you enjoy a wider sound stage, and if you want the sound to be vivid, detailed, and crisp. It is a really crisp sounding amplifier. If you want a brighter presentation, no, don't get it. There are other options, or you could just use the S9C Pro from Awun by itself. That one sounds a bit brighter, a bit more sparkly, a bit more airy in the treble, but it is not quite as lush and it doesn't have the same level of bass depth that the Awun S70 Pro has. I will be making a full written review about this if you want to learn more about its sound. If you want to learn more about the technical aspects of it, it has unique tech inside. And if you want to help me, you can share this video with your friends, you can donate, you can subscribe to the channel, like the video. I would really appreciate if you could do that. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, you are my hero for watching my videos. Thank you so much. And I hope we'll see each other really soon. Bye-bye.